Okay, Jerry. All right. You know, a lot has been said about you, but the main thing is that people recognize the fact that you're able to play with real sincerity every style of music, not only every style, but you can play all parts of a given piece at the same time on this one instrument, the bass. Now, because of this, a lot of people have gone crazy trying to duplicate what you do. People have become great fans of the bass and given quite a bit of attention. How do you all feel about that? Give me a gig, you know. <laughs> well, what, what drove you to this point? Well, I was told, you know, like at a very young age, to uh, learn. The first thing was to learn the melody to every tune, mm -hmm. which I feel is like uh, ultra important. You know, most bass players, most musicians, you know, not, not just on the bass, but on their particular given instrument will usually play just the bass part yeah, or part. just the piano part. I mean, the same thing as for piano players. They should know the bass part, too, at mm -hmm. least, you know, whatever. Right. But the main thing is the melody, I feel, that most bass players, like, are missing. Mm -hmm. Because, like, they'll know the bass part, you know, or whatever, they'll be playing that stuff, and there could be a melody on top, which... Once you know that, especially when it comes to playing changes, you know, harmonic playing, it's like, uh, let's say like Bach, like canons, where there's like two parts. Mm -hmm. There's a bass part and there's a melody part. They're just as important because the chords come in the middle. One supports the other. Yeah, exactly. Well, in fact, one helps the other. By hearing another part, you can more or less define where your part's going to be. You can fill the holes up. Well, plus it's really great to be able to play a melody to a tune. I mean, how many guys can play, you know, on, on the bass, you know, let's say most people, let's say the the melody is always designated, let's say, to a horn player or the mm -hmm. piano or the guitar. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to play it on the bass, too. Certainly. It's a beautiful instrument. Now, what about musicianship? How does this tie in, in terms of um, what you studied? I mean, obviously, you mentioned Bach Cannons. What else did you study? And how does this, how does this all come together under you know, the heading of musicianship? Work. You're just staying out there, in other words, you know, applying it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say, it, so for instance, I just said learn the melodies. So what I tell all my bass students when they first start off is, hey, let's, uh, you know, learn the melodies. Do you know the melody, let's say, to Alfie, as opposed to just the bass part? And, you know, I mean, that's, you know. You know right. You know, etc. Yeah, that gives you the feeling of the song. Yeah. Because then, then it, plus it's the most melodic way for a bass player to learn how to play melodic bass lines mm -hmm. is by, you know, playing melodically within the bass. Was there anything else you studied other than um, Bach? I know you spent a lot of time studying Bach. Well, yeah, I got into that a little later. What I first started studying was, you know, uh, you know, let me see. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I first started playing. Like, for instance, that was Funky Broadway, the bass line, you know, Wilson Pickett's Funky mm -hmm. Broadway, so. Tommy Cogbill. Exactly, it's Tommy Cogbill. <laughs> <laughs> so, doing that stuff is how I learned. Listening mostly to radio, keeping my ears open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, were you reading music then? I didn't start reading until I was older, because I was always playing. And this is a good point, because most, anybody that's, born with a with a real talent to play a natural talent to play which you know i feel i have been and, and mo most all good musicians you know that they, they are born with that talent 
to be able to go out and play, you, you, they usually can play before they really study. You know what I'm saying? You go out, yeah, get the feel of it. Yeah, you feel you're out doing gigs and that sort of stuff. And then finally, when it came time for me to learn how to read, when I, you know, I wanted to learn how to read because I couldn't, and it was really, you know, it was really a drag mm -hmm. because I already could play. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me to have to go back and learn how to read was really a pain. So obviously you learn because of your web report, the stuff that you did was extraordinarily intricate. Well, I was, was reading, reading I was reading way before I got with web well, report. Obviously, you had to. You had right, to. Yeah. But you got to put a high level of reading, you know, to be able to do that at the same, at the same time. Any, um, what did you use to get to that point? Well, believe it or not, it sounds corny, just hard practice. Mm -hmm. You got to put in lots of hours because, like I said, you get fed up especially for the young players that can already play. I mean, how many guys you know on the street and they all say, wow, yeah. I say, how's your reading? <laughs> uh, well, I can read a little bit. Hey, what do you mean a little bit? I mean, if a guy says that, you know he can't read. Right. You know what I mean? I mean you gotta sit down and practice read. It's hard. I mean, I used to spend hours a day just with little, any book I could get a hold of. Mm -hmm. Even treble club, any club, bass club, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. you, and, uh, but just any type of music I could get my hands on just to, to get in it. How'd you get into playing the bass? I know you played drums earlier. Can you tell us that story? Well, the, I was in a band called uh, the Los Olas Brass. It was a, like a funk rock band, you know, play rock roll, a lot of rhythm and blues. All the hits, you, you know, Aretha, from everything like from the T1 of Brass to uh, you know, the big, you know, solo hits of the day. That's basically what we were doing. We had like six horns and three rhythm. And I was playing drums and uh, I had broken my wrist very bad playing football. And the bass player in the band, you know, he wanted to split. So I just went to the bass. <laughs> I went from drums over to bass, that was it. Mm. I was playing the bass within a week. Wow. And the fretless bass? The fretless, I, I took the frets out of my bass. After I was, you know, because I was like getting into jazz a lot and I wanted to have that, that upright sound, you know. So I, I had an upright, the upright. I mean, it took me years and years to, you know, get enough bread to get it. One, uh, I'm from Florida, so one morning I woke up, going to the corner and the bass is in like a hundred pieces, you know, because humidity is so bad. I mean, the upright just blew up. I said, forget it, man. I can't afford this anymore. So I went in, got a knife. And, took all the, you know, frets out of my uh, fender. That was it. And the rest is history. <laughs> Incredible. To be able to pick up an instrument and play within a week's time means you have to have some kind of learning skill. Okay? And to take it to the next step, not only have a learning skill, but to develop to execute such, you know, flawlessly as you do. Well, the main thing is just paying attention to, to people on any instrument. For instance, you know, like you, you look at a guitar player, you just, you know, look at another bass player, just see what he was doing. That's how mainly I, I learned most everything. It was visual, visual. Visual as far as just technique. Let's mm -hmm. see, you know, because I would see, one thing my father told me once when I first started playing the bass, he came home, he saw me and he said, just to put my fingers, space them just like at every fret. You know, I mean, because I was just playing. You know, <laughs> I was playing like that, you know, with, you know. That, I mean, that's how I was playing the bass, right? So, so then I, he said, you know, so I would, you know, I just put my, you know. Okay, so that's like spacing your fingers just by the fret is is uh, as big of a thing that you could do and alternate your fingers accordingly. Mm -hmm. you know, it means it's just very basic. Well, it certainly, certainly has worked. Now, as far as like, getting into little details of this aspect, you, this left hand spacing, okay. Mm -hmm. But what about the, um, what other aspects of the, of the left hand? Because your intonation is, I mean, you have, you know, you have to play fretless space, first of all, intonation has to be right on it. Well, one very, thing, one so thing slight. for instance, right now, I, I'm using a fretted bass. The, how I got my intonation on the fretless is by, first of all, I never practiced a fretless ever because the strings would always eat the neck up. So I would only play it on gigs. But see, you, you, when I would practice with the fretted bass, it's harder actually to play a fretted bass than a fretless because of the fret noise. Mm -hmm. So I would all, you know, so but I would play it. And you play exactly on the fretted bass where you do on the fretless. You just play, you know, I mean, you can play here in the middle. It doesn't right. matter because the tone's going to come out. 
And that's where you get the best sound also on a fretted bass. I mean, if you want to get into clearer. it. Clearer, exactly. So when you go to fretless, and I, seeing that I had taken my frets out, I, you know, I had little, the mark, oh, yeah, the marks were still there with the, because I put with Duratite, some sort of wood putty in there, right? So you could see that, which helped too, you know, to, because, you know, the fretless, or the fender bass, excuse me, you know, it's got such a long neck. Like on an upright, you got position. You just go this far, and you're in the thumb position. You know, you can feel the neck. Right. I mean, you got to go about this far. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a long way. You got to. the same. You got to look at the neck if you're making big jumps. So, you know, that helped a lot having the fret markers. You know, you know where, where the holes were filled in, and then practicing scales. You know, just straight scales gets your hand in shape so that once you start off someplace. You know, you, once you get on the first note, you can go for a long time without having to, you know, check yourself out if you're playing in position, you know what I mean. What about this twilight zone area up here where, like, everybody finds it hard to play because you can play the same thing back here that you can play up here. How'd you work that up? Because you know, a lot of you playing in this solo area of the instrument, you know. Well, there's different, way, different ways of doing scales. For instance, if you just go... See that? I came, I came all the way from that low low C. We're in the key of C. There's a low C. There's a high G. Okay, now this is all without moving my hand once. You see what I'm saying? And it's all right there. You know what I'm saying? All in one position. Okay, then there's other ways. See, because most bass players, for instance, this is something that, that I've been doing the last few years. So you go, you know, taking like, going up to the third, then you got, you know, fourth and the sixth. You know, then major seventh. Then you'd be the ninth. By that time, you'd be up to the twelfth already. You know what I mean? It's like, that's very convenient as opposed to, you know, what you usually would learn. See, I mean, that's how most people yeah. probably originally learned with that's that. That's the making the smooth approach. Well, that's just, that's normal because that's the way from up here, like you were saying. To, to have skipping, you know, skipping from string to string, like good exercises are like uh, sixes. Most people don't practice sixes, like. You see what I'm saying? Where you're alternating a string before, before you're even going anywhere else. You're already jumping. How about your endurance? You have incredible endurance. That's just from years and years of gigging. That's all. Uh, Wow. I mean, I used to play eight sets a night every night when I was a kid, you know, for a year at a time without a night off, that sort mm. of stuff. Mm. Just, that's just playing, playing a lot. You were playing R&B bands a lot then? Yeah, just playing like rhythm and blues all night. Because I never really had to practice all that much for this, uh, endurance because I had it from playing so much. Like, I'd, in fact, I do most of my practicing without even an instrument, just thinking it. Because mm -hmm. my chops, uh, you know, from so many years of playing. Well, that's when your relationship really comes to the fore. Yeah, well, to do that, I'm just lucky enough to have, you know, grown up in an era when rhythm and blues was really in its forte. I mean, that's when you were doing most of your stuff, like with Atlantic and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's the uh, people, the style of music that people were into when I was growing up. So there were lots of dance gigs, you know, playing R&B and funk, and, and then sneak some jazz in on the side, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. 
that I teach cats is just two octave up the board like this. Okay? Yes. I mean, this way your hand is moving every note. Mm -hmm. Okay, as every note is playing it in position. Yeah, as opposed to just, go, yeah, as opposed to just going, let's say. And that just, yeah, as opposed to going. Yeah, you know, because you can go. As opposed to doing that, like an easy skip, like as opposed to doing that, or I go, you get up much faster. You can get there real fast. It's smoother, mm -hmm. but it's tough, and and it it teaches you where the notes are on the fingerboard. You got to be thinking every note where. Okay, and then what you do is you run that stuff. I don't even know if I can do it anymore. Wait a minute. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And double stops as another thing I find is really helps you learn to think about also. Well, because you have to think two notes at a time all the time. Developing thing that make you think. That's ultra important because that way, that way you can, especially in improvisational music, you know where the stuff's at to go for, as opposed to just uh, jiving. Let's say where people are just wiggling their fingers and mm -hmm. you know a couple of licks. I mean, this way we're talking about you know the real deal. <laughs> Yeah, I can see what I did with all the shows really pay off because you play a lot of things in thirds, large, well, large plus, intervals. But plus going up and back with them too. Here's a good exercise. <laughs> go up in major, you know, let's say a seventh, well, what would you just call it, a chord, it's a, you know, the arpeggio, major, major, chord. A major seventh arpeggio, so it's just be, let's say, because I'm doing everything in C now, mm -hmm. so it would be C major, D minor seven, E minor seven, come down to F, F, you know, because uh, then you go up on a G seven, right, then you come down on the A minor, up on what actually would be like what do you call it, the dominant seventh chord G seven without the G in it. Using a diatonic 
use of the scale, playing the chords, but you're using it in a very musical way instead of going up, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 not, yeah, yeah not, not making it a practice. Make, make it uh -huh. actually, uh -huh. you know. Make like, it musical. Exactly, that's very important. And it reflects in your playing also. Well, does it I, does always it try to, I always try playing. to be musical, yeah. But, well, you know, sometimes it does. <laughs> I hope not all the time, you yeah. know. But, I mean, there's things to practice, you know. That was just, that was just a whole tone. That was just a whole tone scale, alternating fingers with different numbers, you know, just like making maybe patterns of three and four notes at a time or five notes at a time, you know. Like mm -hmm. a, I noticed that and while you're playing, you vary your left hand position and technique. Can you explain a little bit of that? Well, lots of times it's got to do with just a tone I'm going for. Sometimes I'll like uh, bend strings, which some you got, you know, mm -hmm. like, like a guitarist, and sometimes you, you know, depending on, especially on the fretlets, let's say, sometimes I got different ways of just getting different tones out of my vibrato, you know, and and when it's and most of all, it's just whatever's comfortable. To tell you the truth, you know, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you'll be playing, you know, you you change your hands to get uh, that that would actually have something to do with the uh, what'd you say uh, my endurance even. you know what I mean like sometimes you just change your hands to get it different so you know like your so your left shoulder ain't breaking right. halfway through you change the muscles yeah up. exactly so mm -hmm. that, that's got a lot to do with it just uh, part of the endurance mm -hmm.
left hand. Now of all this left hand execution, you're getting a sound, I know, from your left hand, but your right hand also amplifies the sound. I know sometimes you play in this area, high above, at the end of the fingerboard, you play over this pickup, you play here, you play here, you play everywhere on the instrument. It's like you play all the music, you play all the bass. <laughs> you know, how does this um, affect the sound? What do you, what do you, um, what are you doing when you're doing this? What are you going for? When you're playing back here, so. Well, the main thing when I'm playing in the back is when I'm playing fast for speed, okay? Because, needless to say, the string is not as taut here as it is here. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is this just doesn't move as much. So it's it's quicker up here. See that? Lower. See what I mean? Yeah. Back here, it's, it's all the further I'm going. <laughs> Use your thumb too, you know, for double stops a lot, I use my thumb. Here you get a more rounder tone. See? There's a harder. Are you playing, um... What about picking technique? First of all, let's start at the beginning of picking. Okay. So, this is just... Which is the hardest thing, it's just... Uh, alternating I mean, just, just alternating your fingers. That's the toughest thing with the right hand to begin with. You know, so... Is there anything you'll ever have to play on the bass and then doing it with the other fingers too, which I can't even do. <laughs> yeah, and then, then like, see how that, I'm not coming back right then, I just rake them coming back. When you rake something, if you want, if you want to, to rake the string, in other words, then you're going to have to mute it down here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Left hand. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, it's easier when you're picking something because... The hand is already there. Yeah, so what you do is you just lightly, you know, after after you pick each note, you just take the finger off on your left hand. It's and and then it's short, you know, because otherwise you just have... You, know, you don't want that. Exactly. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So then uh, what I do is just, that's where, like, scales come in, just over and over. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now you're incredibly clean. Your sound is like there's no added noise. So it's like with playing the bass. Now that's a combination of both hands. Uh huh. To pick the good picking, but also the good muting with your left hand. Left hand muting. Like left hand muting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Don Lee, I mean, it took me years. It took me nine years to learn how to play Don Lee, for instance. But most of that was not just was it was mostly making the instrument not make noise. Excuse me. In other words, not making noise with uh, between the left hand and the right hand. I mean, you know. I mean, that's tough. You know. So so you got both hands really got to be working together on that. Together. A lot of it is with the left. I only pick with these two fingers. These other ones are always like muting somehow. Like they'll be sitting here. You see what I'm saying? Like when, when I'm playing, these will be sitting here, usually like this, something like this, mm -hmm. to prevent your right hand from making the noise down here. That helps here. Okay, because basically you can do, you know. With one hand. Yeah. You know, anybody should be, but now you heard the noise that I was just exactly. getting. Exactly. So, you know. Uh -huh. So the right hand helps you do that. Exactly. It's basically just laying it down, is all it is. And these, these two fingers are usually taking care of the G and the D, and this is usually taking care of the, the E. Because, you know, I, you probably do a lots, lots of playing on an A. See, that, that's, that's where most of the, uh, the, the best bass tones are at. 
thing like this is not my normal bass I got a, a precision bass neck on here deliberately to have to stretch my hands well, you know because the jazz bass neck is center which I usually play on stage but but you know this is good it's good to practice on something because like coming down you saw me and I was starting to like, scuff up a little bit man but you know it's good because it makes makes your fingers stretch <laughs> as much as you can do is really stretch your hand and then the other thing I was just coming down with then I was going up the next notes going up major with a flat five then right and then go back to the minor again just something to think you just play a you minor a major scale. minor major but they're not scales those are arpeggios but it's hmm. just something like to, to think about the neck where all the notes are getting back to what we talked about earlier, knowing where all the notes are on the neck. Mm -hmm. You know, like my father said to me once, he said, Jack, yeah, look, I'm going to come back in a year. He was on the road, he says, and I want you to know where every note is on the neck. You know, if I say, I want a C sharp on your G string, a high one, you better know where it is, you know. And when it, he came back the next year, I knew it. <laughs> you know, because I, mean, I, don't, I know cats that can really play, and they don't even know where the notes are still. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. See, your father's musician mm -hmm. also. Yeah, he's a drummer mm -hmm. and a singer. All right. So you're basically self-taught then. Formally self-taught. Formally self-taught. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 